Welcome to another episode of Frankie D Crafter. Let's make an epic looking snake mountain. I'm leaving some timestamps just in case you want to go to the end of the episode and check out how I made the snake head. It's okay. Go ahead. No worries. I won't judge you if you skip. Alright, for everybody that stayed, let's go through this messy process of how I crafted Snake Mountain. I don't plan to spend a lot of time basing here. If you think there's something that I missed in the video, please let me know in the comment section below. I'll be mainly concentrating on what I feel is important to the build, like making sure this thing doesn't weigh a ton. The best thing you could do here is use pink foam for the bottom level and rolled up aluminum on the higher levels. I mainly did this because the foam is flat and it's easier to stack things on top of it. If you use cardboard for basing, please glue multiple pieces and make sure that you alternate the direction of the corrugations. This is where I actually take the time to base the second floor. I need places where my players can have battles in and epic moments. I want there to be a balcony of sorts connecting all the floors together. I texture a piece of pink foam and decide to pin it now. I figure I can always support more with sculpt mold. I want to make a light structure to then be able to add plaster and clay to the build in thin layers. In the previous video I mentioned how it was a mistake to test my own sculpt mold here. It was not as light, plus it didn't have that same look. I don't think it looks that bad, but it's just not what I wanted weight wise. I fight through it and start putting steps to the second floor. This is just styrofoam board. I start planning how to texture the rest of the mountain and I test out three methods. The first being bark. After I sanitized it by boiling it, I then go ahead and coat them with PVA glue to add strength and seal it. Next up is plaster poured on aluminum that has been layered on a metal pan. Simple as that. And lastly, the most reliable way is to use pre-existing molds. Let's let those dry. For the first snake part, I use a combination of pink foam and aluminum. With a light touch of hot glue. I cover it with real sculpt mold and wait until it dries to smooth it out. You can always smooth it out as you're working on it by using a little bit of water. Very important for the build here are textures. I was not about to draw every single scale on this. I opt to make my own stamp out of wire. This way I, I technically only worked on one scale. I add a little bit of water to the surface of the sculpt mold and then start adding my good polyform clay. I apply the clay only on the sides. Since no one will see the bottom, there's no reason to add detail there. As for the top, I have other plans. I then texture the sides using rolled up aluminum. I glue the first floor and tail to a board. Then using no more nails, fuse it, I start more scale details to highlight the path. I'm using this watermelon seed pasta for this effect. The same pasta I used in the trees in the goblin home videos. I will admit, I did this step a bit too early. I start to tile the floor. I add a bit of water to help the clay stick. The point here is that I want the tiles to crack a bit. 
That's why I choose cheaper air dry clay, Crayola, that tends to crack a little bit more. I texture it using a beat up brush. And then I wing the measurements for the tiles. This is where I start to connect the pads. I also take the opportunity to fill all the gaps in this step. I cover all the playable areas with the cheap air dry clay. This includes the tail path. And using the good clay, I add stone walkways outside of the mountain. Check out this video for tips on something as simple as this. Next step is to add the spikes because that's the cool thing to do here, you know it. The actual reason is that I want to connect the piece to the rod. And when I place this on the table, I want there to be visual cues that these terrain pieces belong together. My dad works installing sprinkler systems and decided to give him a visit. So I knew he had some plastic hose laying around. He was wondering why I only wanted the scraps. I told him I would put them to good use. You guys let me know if I succeeded or not. I shape it in the best way I can without worrying about the bends. I cover it with real sculpt mold and allow it to dry completely before proceeding. To be safe about the bond here, I did what I can only call as the most paranoid precaution for my players I have ever taken. I decided to drill some screws to attach the snake segment to the second floor. I add steps where the snake path continues from the platform on the first level. I forgot to make one side flat, so then I gently and carefully sanded some of the sculpt mold. The steps from here are pretty much identical to the first floor. Yo, real quick here, one of the biggest things this project needs that I almost forgot to put on the video is actually these little things right here. They go under tables or chairs or whatever. I picked them up at the dollar store. And uh, yeah, I almost forgot to put this in. And this is, this is essential. If you don't put this, um, the layers, the levels could potentially damage the other ones. So. My bad guys, this was a this was a close one. Sorry. I throw a crap ton of pasta at it. Tips for the top level? Well, just make sure it sits balanced on top of the level two. That's it. I'll talk about the head soon. Don't worry about it, we're getting there. Let's add the last bit of clay to the snake segment. Here, I meticulously sculpt the shapes of my rock pieces. Meticulously.
This is where we start playing the puzzle game. What pieces go well where? There is nothing to it. Just make sure everything blends well. I make the stones near the spikes look like the spikes broke out of the mountain. But the rest is pretty much straightforward. Just glue things using plaster where you think they look good. Let's finally talk about modeling the clay. We start with aluminum to make sure we don't use a lot of clay and kill our budget like we haven't already. Shape it and cover it with polyform clay. It's a lot smoother and it tends to stay together better. People have warned me that eventually it does crack, but I've had this <sighs> kind of dusty. I haven't used it in a while. But I have this from, I don't remember how long ago, and I don't see a single crack on it. So if it lasts me more than a year, then I think it's still a pretty good clay. I think. I'm adding the first layer of teeth here, just drawing it on the clay. Now the key here is to make all the shapes of the head separate. Figure it's easier to work this way. The fangs are super easy. Texture in here is key. You don't want a lot of smooth surfaces. Add a layer of PVA glue to the back of the fangs and allow that to dry. Make another one and move on to the next bits. These are the eyebrows of the snake. Get four balls of clay ready and then shape them like teardrops with one side being a bit flat. This is the side that goes on the snake. Also make sure that you have at least one pair that is smaller than the other. Then just draw a spiral design on the teardrops leaving the flat side plain. Once everything is dried, we can continue. Let's add what will be the eyes. The right beads go a long way here. Easy and simple. Everything should be kept simple. It's easier to break things down into shapes and noticing how those shape overlap each other. I add glue to some connections because polyform bonds very well with PVA glue. As you can tell, I roll up most of my shapes into snake shapes. It's one of the easiest shapes to manipulate and work with. I try to make some of these shapes as flat as possible to make it look more like a statue and less like an actual monster. Let's start to glue our bits. The front of the eyebrows will also act as the nostrils of the snake. Glue the bigger brow things towards the back of the snake head. Wait, I almost forgot. Let me just add this bottom lip. There we go, let's get back to the other side. I want to make the statue head almost look armored. We'll see if I succeed or not. To make it connect to the goblin designs here, I also draw details I had drawn on the temple build. Remember, this was the same culture building both of these structures. Allow the clay to dry a bit in between the steps. This is necessary especially when we start to add water to blend pieces together. Just like in this middle piece for the eyebrows. I don't make the eyebrows nice and smooth because I keep in mind that these things were sculpted from stone. You know what I'm saying.
Here we just glue the fangs, nothing to it. Let's go. Let's try to get rid of the last smooth surfaces on the top of the head by continuing the design from earlier. From here we just pin the final scales on the back of the head and get it ready to be attached to the rest of the craft. Let's add some pupils with a hot tool here. I also take some time to draw some crazy eye lines. And now you have yourself a God's hand in the palm of your hand. Alright guys, for now this will be it, but stay tuned, the painting episode is next. If you enjoy this video and the content this channel produces, please consider donating to the Frankie D Crafter Patreon page. It's because of the support from these awesome people that I am able to keep the channel going. Okay, so we're done with this portion of the build, and it was hard to get through. I'm talking about editing and everything. Since I was jumping around so much with this project, this editing process took its toll on me. Hopefully everything came out alright on your side, and like I said, we'll see you on the next one. Peace.